talking about birds, bird watching sites, and the situation during these COVID times in Cambodia. Sofal, how are you tonight? Sofal? Sofal? <laughs> I think we just lost Sofal Chen. <laughs> yes, so far. Oops. Well, we're supposed to have the Asian Bird Fair in Shemrip, and Sofal is based in Shemrip right now. Sofal, are you ready? <laughs> okay, he's coming back right now. Okay, welcome back so far. Are you ready to present? Are you um, my my internet <laughs> my internet connection is, is um is really bad right now. I hope that okay. it will work. Okay. So let's start let's start if you are ready. Yes, yes. Okay. I think um, I am ready. So Hello, everyone. So Hello. You can start now. Hello, everyone. So um, my name is Jin Sopal from Cambodia Bird Guide Association. Um, I am one of the co-founders of the association and Nowadays, I access some of the office work and I partly guiding for tour around Cambodia. So um, before starting the talk, I like to say thank you so much for giving me this chance today right now so that I can um, tell you all about some bird species and birding sky and, and the real situation of the conservation in, in the country of Cambodia right now. So um, thank you so much. Sorry for, for the internet, is, um, it, it, that seems bad right now. Um, Cambodia is, is known by the richness of culture and also the history. On top of that, um, Cambodia is also very rich of um, the nature resources, wildlife, and, and especially the wild birds. So um, Cambodia is, is actually the last stronghold for some of the world rarest birds, such as um, the Chan ibis, white shouldered ibis, Bengal florican, and so on. So um, you will see some of the photo in the next slides. We have more than 60 natural protected area in the country right now. And what you can see in the map with the red dot are, are the size that um, most of the, the conservation project take place for, for the various of the rare species of this written species taking um, place by different NGOs in Cambodia. And most of the um, birding hotspots in Cambodia are in those areas, actually. And today I have um, the six top birding sites in Cambodia to show you and 
the end of my um, presentation, I would like just to um, express myself a little bit on on the real situation of um, of the consumption in the country in in Cambodia. And the first site I'd like to um, talk right now is Bang uh, is Prekdol. Sorry, Prekdol is um, located in Badambang Province, which is the um, the nearby province to Siem Reap from where I am. But to get to Prekdol is is closer to go from Siem Reap. It's only take around one and a half hour on the boat ride um, to get into the area and Prekdol is the most well-known site for most of the tourists who visiting Siem Reap because of um, floating village. The floating village is actually the second interest for the tourists who visiting Siem Reap after um, those um, temple of Angkor Wat and learning their their lifestyle on the water is quite interesting. You know, they spend their lifetime living on the water and they have everything on the water, um, such as you know, floating houses, schools, farm, restaurants and stuff like that. And among the birds, the Prekdol is, is, is a very productive site for bird watching. It is actually the largest breeding colony in Southeast Asia for big water birds, such as the greater and lesser adjutant, the rare milky stork, painted stork, um, spot bill pelican, and every year, most of um, these birds are traveling from different places in the country, and they are gathering in Prekdol for breeding at the at the end of the rainy season. So um, this is what um, it looks like in in the dry season when the area is drier and and the, the water is concentrate on the canals and um, and ponds and the fish and birds are gathering in one place as well. And it gives the, the best view for bird watching and also for bird photography. Sometimes you can see thousands and thousands of pelicans and swimming in the in the canal and along the side that you can see storks, um, ibises, egrets, heron, and on the treetop you can see cormorants and um, things like that. It is actually the one of um, the the largest breeding colony for for the the grey-headed fish eagle as well in, in Asia. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, if you see the picture, this is a um, really cool size. So, um, um, on top of the the floating village and the, and the lake, that it is very interesting to learn. Even non-bird uh, would prefer to spend some time to go around the um, to go around the area. Sometimes they, they like to jump up on the observation platform where they build on the treetop to renew the, um, the whole area. And you know they, they prefer to see a lot of bird in a place like that. So it is a really cool site. Yep, and the, the second one is the, the Bengal Florican Conservation Area. It is actually located in almost in the center of the country, and it is one of the very productive sites um, in Cambodia. Bird watching around the area is a lot of fun, but um, it's 
seems a bit sad that most of the bird watcher who come around Cambodia um, only have um, usually just a half day to renew the um, the rare Bengal florican in the field. And we have um, around 80% of the global population in um, in Cambodia. And as I mentioned earlier, that it, it would be like the the last stronghold for the Bengal florican in in Cambodia. And at the same habitat with the paddy rice field, with the paddy rice field and bushes and ponds with muddy spot, it provides the, the great habitat for um, the water bird as well, such as the um, stork, pelican, ibises, ducks. And when it's a bit drier, it's also very productive for um, for waders. And the Sora screen are also present at the site every year. And yeah, yeah, usually there's a small group of about 10 birds um, spending their winter um, time around the site. Yeah, it is um, the good area for um, for the migratory species um, where people can can find the the blue throat or the wintering raptors such as um, the four species of harriers um, the the pike harrier the hen harrier the eastern and western marsh harriers and and so on yeah so um, this is a very productive site it is where people can spend the whole day just to go around the area. Sorry. <clears throat> so um, last year we, we spot many different flocks of um, chestnut head, uh, chestnut eared bunting and the uh, yellow breasted bunting, which is which is um, the species that was absent a few years before that. Yeah, the, it's also good for some bush bird and seed bird like um, the avadavad sparrows and um, chicanas, cisticolas and so on. Yeah. And the third side is the Anthropian small that you can call in short as um, ATT. Anthropian yeah. small is located in the um, northwest of um, Cambodia in um, Bante Minche province. It is um, actually a man made reservoir where it was built in um, during the Khmer Rouge region. Um, but it is known as the, um, the feeding ground for hundreds of um, Sora screen. At the, um, at the end of the dry season. Every year that we find more than 200 pairs of the crane in the area. So um, when everyone talk about ATT, they know that they're going to see the Sora screen. But um, actually, because of the mixture of the habitat, it is a really, really cool mixture of habitat on the, um, around the reservoir. Um, there is some patches of um, the dry dipterocar forest, the paddy field, the water surface, the grassy spot area where it provides a nice um, feeding ground for wintering um, species, just like this guy, um, the, the here he is, and sometimes even the big aquila, like um, the, the greater spotted eagle, the step eagle, and the shorto snake eagles, and so on, they are around the area all the time. And when it's drier in the dry season, it 
provides the very large mud flat in the reservoir where people can really expect to see many different species of waders um, in the reservoir. And yeah, but what you can see in the picture, this is the, the grassy spot and it is where people can find different waterfowl such as um, ducks and gaganese and um, jacana, swamp hens and mohens and coot, pygmy geese, whistling duck, pintail, many different species. And many times that you will see like um, thousands and thousands of birds um, are gathering in the place. It is a really cool site actually. So um, not just in the, the reservoir, but um, because of um, it is the area of the agriculture with thousand hectares of paddy rice field. So um, it produces a lot of food for big border birds like this. So um, many times that you can see um, the water bird are around the area almost all year round. And the northern plain of the country, we have um, three main sites to go for the really rare um, bird species, such as um, vulture, ibises, and, and ducks. So um, what I'd like to show you first is the, um, is the point on the map. I use the, the plain map here is, um, it's probably um, easy for you to see where the site is um, um, in Cambodia. So um, in the Northern plain, we have, um, we have Smart Valley, we have Okoki, and we have um, Bang Tuol. The first one is um, Smart Buy, is where um, most of the people know as the home of the ibises among the, the service bird watcher and bird photographer. When they want to, to see the ibises, they only know that um, they have to go Smart Buy. The habitat of um, the dry deterocap forest with rivers and ponds and grassy spots, it provides the, the, the great habitat for many different bird species on, on top of um, the two main bird, giant ibis and the wide-shouldered ibis. So it is actually that um, People will do a lot of work because of the rareness of the ibises. People would love to have a chance to um, to see the bird in the feeding ground like this, or they don't mind waking up very early in the morning to see them in the roosting trees. Because um, both the of the white-shouldered and the giant, uh, um, giant, uh, giant ibis, sorry, they are very shy. So they usually come to, to their roost late at night. Yeah, they, they come to their roost late in the evening and they leave their roost very early in the morning. So um, sometimes we even start our activity to find the giant ibis at even 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, so um, it requires to do a lot of work before we we can see them. And yeah, you can see that um, they are beautiful ibis and they are very rare. For giant ibis, there are less than 300 birds left in the world. And there are less than seven hundred bird left for the white shouldered ibis. And it seems to be um, the only place in the world where people can can see them right now. There are some record 
um, in the in the nearby country like um, in Laos, but is is many years already. I would say um, ten years. So um, Cambodia is probably the last stronghold for these two species, and actually that. Um, many NGOs are putting down many different projects trying to save them. Um, with, the, with the habitat of um, the dry dipterocap forest, in the dry season it provides the paradise for woodpeckers. There are 16 species of woodpecker I recorded in the, in the area. Yeah. So um, in the picture, you can see um, the, um, the roof was built lit on the left and, and the yellow crown woodpecker on the right. And they are the, the small woodpeckers. There are many more that I don't have enough picture to show you all here. Um, the, the grace lady woodpecker, the lace woodpecker, flame bags, black headed woodpecker many different yeah 16 species of woodpeckers and yep on top of the woodpecker eight species of owls where people can see them in just a few days um birding around the local community know where to go for this uh, of the owl and many times you can even spot them on the roosting, uh, the the roosting tree during the daytime, yeah. So um, more than three hundred bird species are recorded in this site, and I love to go around the area in the dry season, because um, in the dry season when um, when most of the tree have no leaf on them. When they get really dry, the tree has no leaf. So that it, it became like the, the dead planet that you can see, but even they're flying in the distance. Yeah, but very easy birding around the area. And the next one is um, Bang Tuol. Bang Tuol is known as the vulture restaurant. We have three different species of vulture living residently in Cambodia, but they're not easy to find. Yeah. Um, Any time that you want to see some vulture, you have to drop down the car case and wait for them. Yeah. So um, the the bird watching tour is usually connected with the feeding programs. Yeah. So that people have to um, provide the carcass for the watcher before they um, be, before they can see one, and this is the that's the main threat of the watcher in Cambodia because um, um, the lack of food and the loss of the habitat. Yeah, but um, according to the um, to the record, the the two watcher of um, white rum and the slender bill watcher seems to be increasing while um, the red-headed watcher seems to be um, stable yeah so at the watcher restaurant we build the bird hide where people can um, stay in the hide very quietly and waiting for them to come down um, to the carcass so this is um, the, the very good site for for vulture photography as well, yeah. <clears throat> the red-headed vulture usually acting like the like the king of the vulture, yeah. So um, usually they come down to the carcass before the other vultures, and after start pecking a little bit, the the other vulture will come down and and they will stay away from the carcass because um, usually they, this guy like chewing a lot of bones and, and spine. So they like to clean up, yeah? So they seem to be um, the one to start and, and the one to clean. Yeah. 
um, the slender bill watcher is the biggest among the the watcher of um, Cambodia and a lot of time that um, this guy will fight very badly for the carcass. So they, they, they really fight. And on the side of, um, on the left, you can see the white rum watcher. I'm sorry that I don't have a proper um, picture of the white rum watcher to show, but um, you can see on the left, there is one um, uh, white rum watcher and, and a few on the right as well. Um, yep. And the next one is um, Okoki. Okoki is um, one of the signs that um, people can go for the wiving duck, or it is known as the wiving wood duck. It is the, the rare bird. And we set up the birding high at the two ponds and waiting for them for all the time. So, um, while the target game is always playing, we have to play our luck um, with, with this one target bird. Sometimes it's very lucky. We can um, see them easily and we can have time for more birds um, around the area. But um, if not, we have to spend, we have to go back to the high again and again and, and hope to see them. And, in the pond, sometimes the giant ibis are, are coming around and sitting at the same pond of the white um, wiving ducks. And in the pond, many times that you can see different mammals coming for water, yeah, you know, like the um, the wild pig, the gower, the bantang, or the um, moonjack. Um, sometimes the, the primates like um, macaques or langur will come down to the same pond as well for drinking. Yeah. Um, the Oriental Bay out is the, is the big highlight of the site. Um, it is the only site where I can find the Oriental Bay out and get some Photoshop. Um, from my birding experience of um, it is a, a really cool bird to find. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, the jaw, uh, the blind frog mouth and the other species of, um, of the forest bird like the, um, the banded kingfisher, broadbill, bulbuls, and many other species. And on top of that, um, it is, it is the site that's surrounded um, by the dry deterioca forest. <clears throat> Sorry, just like um, just like the Bung Tol, the vulture restaurant, where people can spend time and and enjoy the general birding, which is the um, overlap species to smart by. You know, but like um, they can go for owl, they can go for especially woodpeckers and shrikes and nuthatches and bird of prey and quails and and so on. And all those sites, um, they have the record of the bird species, more than 300 bird species of, around. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, this is something that you can find in the dry, um, open this is the um the white ram pygmy falcon so um at the end of um of my talk i would like to showing a little bit of my opinion about the conservation in the the conservation in cambodia is seems to be facing a lot of um, problems that affect the conservation work badly right now. Yeah. Such as what I, I raised in, in the, the slide, yeah, the, the population raising that um, 
that would raise up the disturbance to um the to the bird in the protected area or even at the, the general places. Development is also a big problem that we are facing um, right now. And yeah, the, the top two reasons are something that we really have to control. Yeah, the deforestation for the agriculture is, is really bad that um, I can see thousands and thousands of hectares of forests are cleared every year for the um, agriculture. Um, even if it is the large scale or small scale deforestation, but it does affect the, the wildlife in Cambodia. Um, illegal tree chopping for wood for example the good quality wood for for selling is also is still a big problem for um for most of the protected protected area at any time yeah wildlife hunting and trading is something that always happen in the country and and that's because of um every class of Cambodian people still love eating bushmeat. Yeah, they they seem to be um, to be really proud of um, eating bushmeat. Yeah, many people like to go hunting for eating. They go hunting for selling because um, it is the really good market for for bushmeat especially for the big mammals such as gaur, deer, um, moon jet. So it, it, it's really sad. And, and while the, the mammal in the country is really rare, they are turning to go for birds. Uh, um, I, I live in the, on the outskirts of the city of Simriap and um, the watercock is, is, is the bird that people hunt every day and and not the only watercock um, the other water birds as well such as the um, the egret snipe and and um, it's not only hunting you know that they they go for um, trapping them, catching them alive to um, to sell at different pagoda for marine release, and that that um, according to the the belief, it is something very very wrong, and and it, it's really hard to um, to control. And during this COVID time, all those cases is getting even a lot of worse yeah. there are more cases of bird hunting more cases of um animal hunting more cases of um the, the tree chopping illegally and moe and different ngos are really fighting for for this and we are trying to um to save the remaining nature resources in in Cambodia, and sometimes even um, the ranger from MOE or the ground staff of different NGOs are risking their life trying to um, to protect the forest and and the wildlife of, in Cambodia. So um, this is this is hard hard to understand. And yeah, at the end of um, my presentation, I would like to say thank you to you all here. Thank you so much for your braveness to do to do all everything to save um, the nature, to to save the the, the wildlife, and, and you do it. it it's really, really good. And I hope there are more people um, like you in Cambodia.
because um, what I faced every day is like all this sad thing. And I really hope that um, the, the better situation will come back soon so that um, allows all of us to do a better job. And, and taking this chance, talking a little bit about my um, um, association that um, we are the, the nonprofit organization that trying to, um, to, make, to make up different projects for wildlife conservation. And all we can do is, is from trying to save up or to raise the fund by selling, um, by providing bird watching tour around the country. While the, the tourism is, is closed down, that we, we have absolutely nothing to do right now. And we still have many different projects um, to go and, and to do. And, you know, we, it's still a lot of things to do. And in my opinion about the conservation in Cambodia, I would say <clears throat> it is still a very long way for the conservation in Cambodia to go. Um, there's still a lot of work to do. They still need to pay a lot of money before, um, before we can achieve um, the, the conservation in the country. So um, I, I really hope that we can, we can do more. I really expect that I, I can do more. So um, um, that's all I have for now. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for everyone. Try, um, thank you for all your attention. So. Thank you so far for your presentation. Yeah. Uh, sharing with You're us your, your bird watching and the problems you're facing right now. I think most of us, a lot of us are also facing the same problem with regard to our environment, to yeah. wildlife in our own countries. Uh, if anyone has questions for us of all, you can ask them right now. Well, I'll ask the first question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned that during the co this COVID times, there are more people hunting. Is it because yeah. people are uh, need to eat, or is it because there's lesser government people going around to to check if they're doing this activity? Um, actually, they uh, they are both reason. Yeah, because of um, they they lose their job. Yep. If you are talking about the people in the in the city, they lose their job. They can start different way to um, to farm, you know, to do anything else, change different jobs as the way they can do. But um, the people that live in the protected area, while the economy is going down, they you know apart from planning um, from farming in the in the wrong season they they have to go back to the the forest and and trying to crap everything they can from um from the forest so even the tree chopping or or you know getting the birds or animal anything they can you know just for a little bit of money and for their their food and if you are talking about the um the government rangers um as I mentioned that even the, the ranger from the MOE or the ground staff of different NGOs, they are trying to, to do a lot of work right now, but um, I'm sure that they are not around in the, in the area for 24 hours. Yeah? So um, there are a lot of people that are going around all the time. So it's really hard to control. Yeah, but it's really hard to protect the area. Yeah. 
Rajendra. Hi. Hi. Hi, Rajendra. Hi, everyone. Hey, thank you so far. It's a really great uh, presentation. Thank you. I was, I was in your country about exactly three years back. That was the time that you guys were just formed, you know, the Cabinet World Guys Association were in a active. That's where the Johnny was taking a lead on that. So I yeah, visited, yeah. Yeah, I visited a couple of your places. That is really nice. You know, I really what I liked the most was to be into that uh, summit way, the community laws, you know, the visiting the people for yeah, I yeah. And yeah, I had, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, the top boy, I, uh, the Ivy Spill thing. Yeah. Uh, we saw that uh, joint ivies and white shoulder ivies and many other birds. You know? Yeah. Really a lot of, uh, right. <laughs> that, the, that the whole community was uh, uh, dedicated for ivy spills, right? And we also <laughs> purchased some ivy spills, right? And yeah, uh, yeah we visited the Angkor <laughs> You know the Nom Penh, that's where you see the Cambodian yellow birds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm glad. I'm glad to to see you here, Rajendra. I keep um, hearing your name for many times, but actually, we we have never have a chance to meet. So um, I hope that um, we can catch up um, on your next trip here. Sure, looking forward. And uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Disappoint, my disappointment was there. You know, we've been to that beautiful uh, forest. You know, that's a very really lovely forest, but. Uh, we were really unable to see any mammals there. You know, yeah, that, that's really animals. sad. And there also density of birds was also very less, but uh, there was very nice species. But, uh, I would like to, you know, co come back once the situation gets normal. Yeah, yeah. Can, can you share me, like, can you tell me when is the best time? Because uh, when we were in September, end of September, that was really heavy rainfall, particularly time that we went to Angkor Wat. You know, we yeah. had to go over the <laughs> umbrella. <laughs> there was so heavy rainfall that uh, we couldn't do much of birding into, around the Angkor Wat. And I think Angkor, Angkor Wat around that uh, area is you can spend two two days or so. So many nice forests down, right? Yeah, yeah. The the density around the um around the Anko area is still really good. Anytime I, I get around I'm happy to see all those big trees. But um there are also less birds. Yeah. Um not too many um resident species around the area because of um the disturbance. Because lots of people are going around every day. You can see some bird um Unless you need to go to the to the right spots at the right time, yeah. But um, around the Angkor Wat is the is the good area to um, to see some um, wintering species such as flycatcher or rail or wagtails and you know all, all those kind of stuff. And yeah, come back to your question. The good time for bird watching in Cambodia is from December. Okay. To March. Yeah. Okay, December, March. Yep. In April is still still very good, but then it, it, it's getting too hot. Yeah. Yeah. And for bird photography, it is it's getting a lot better in the drier time, like in um, the late of um, February and till the early of the rainy season again in June. You, know, you can still go around for um, different places for different species. Yeah. It's more productive um, for bird photography when it's drier and hotter. Thank you so far. I hope that I can come back to it uh, you know, sometime later and when we'll the situation Thank you, thank you, Rajendra. I'm, I will be very pleased to catch up with you. Yeah, one time in the near future. <laughs> I will share with this uh, your presentation with with my colleague that who has been with me on the tour.
because we didn't do a much longer tour. We did a six days tour with your wow. company. With that, yeah. So we have we had a six of that, us. Yeah, 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 that will be right. Thank you, Rajan. Oh, thank you. We have people to visit there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Rajan. Thank you. Shubhang, do you have a question? Uh, hello, hi everyone. Good to see hello. you all again. Uh, so far, uh, I just um, am uh, wondering how uh, common are the Oriental day owl in Cambodia, and is there a specific uh, location where it is regularly seen, or uh, it, uh, out of ten, how how often do you see uh, the Oriental scops owl? Oriental, sorry, Oriental bay owl. Oriental bay owl, yes, yes. Um, I. Yeah, first, uh, I'd like to thank you for the question, but um, mm -hmm. my answer is from my experience. Yeah, um, I've been around the, the jungle for um, almost 10 years right now, but um, it is um, the only, um, I have seen the bird for just three times, actually. Yeah, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the they are around. If you will go around at the at the area, um, they are hard to find. They are hard to see because they are in the um, they they like to be in the big tree. They are the small owl, and they like to be sitting among the trees. So um, many times you can hear hear the bird very close, but you cannot spot them, spot them out. Um, at the Okuki is um, is most likely to be the site that um, people find them for more often. Yeah. So um, during um, January, February, and March is is the good time to go to the site for the um, Oriental Bay Owl. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank you're you. welcome. And uh, on a uh, for a birding trip, how many uh, days do you think uh, should cover good part of uh, Cambodia to get the most out of uh, uh, the birding in terms of uh, numbers and uh, species? Um, I would say two weeks. Days, okay. Yeah, two weeks because um, um, from a Side to another, it 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 does take time, and um, actually, that in in two weeks' time, we can arrange all the um, the birding in the in the most um, um, productive site, um, and and it's gonna be done in in two weeks' time. Yeah. Mm, okay. And uh, anywhere from December to the February, you said, right? And yep. Um, the the best time is, is is February and March. Yeah, early March. That that's the best time for most of the species. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, Chubzang. Chubzang is our speaker for next week. Uh, he is from Bhutan, and he will tell us more about the birds and why. It's the place called happiness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a question from Andy Lee of Malaysia. Hi, I'm Andy from Malaysia. <laughs> Greetings to all. From your presentation, I noticed that most of the birds you are referring to are the water birds and ground, ground birds. That means if you go birding in Cambodia, we will see yeah. birds, right? And how do we get to them? We go by by foot or by by boat um thank you for the question um it depends on the site uh actually um from the first site to go to um Pretol. Pretol is is on the very edge of the Tunle Sab lake <clears throat> and to go around the um Pretol, we spend uh most of the time sitting on the boat yeah, but that's the only side that um, um, we take the boat. We, uh, the other side, we, we can travel by car.
to get to the actual site and then we spending some time walking around the area for bird watching and and stuff like that so um actually that we have um more site for bird watching yeah more um hotspot but i um in the presentation i i just raised up the six top birding um side from my experience yeah so you also have forested area right yes yes we do have um the the four forest area like in the um um south east or or on north north east of sorry in the southwest and north east of the country yeah we have um we have the place where you can go for some endemic species and some very near endemic species in the um in the forest area yeah such as the um um cambodian laughing shrush cambodian tail bird um yeah we have five endemics yep we uh we have laughing shrush tail bird flower picker um wren babbler and the robin yeah <clears throat> thank you you're welcome you're welcome thank you so much any more questions <laughs> Mark? No. Uh, so far, maybe you can tell us how you how the Cambodia Bird Guide Association started. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for um for for the idea. It is probably um a big story. A very long story of myself and um, and my colleagues uh, before we, we we got the idea to start the association. Um, we used to work together um, for one of the conservation organization, and I was the first um, to um, to quit the the job and. And that's because um, some error um, system that cannot fix, and I'm not happy to work. Uh, and then I I left the the association, and that was the um, that was the tough decision for myself, as I still love um, going around for bird watching. I'm still um, I was still very happy to be a part of the conservation project and stuff like that. Yeah, but then um, later on, some of my colleagues found the same situation as I did. So, um, and then um, after that, uh, we catch up together and, and say because of um, we were friends working in the same place and, and, and catch up uh, and talk talking to them what you want to do now we, we, we don't have jobs and 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 we, we cannot earn any money what you want to do right now so um we we caught up for many and it came up with different idea to um to go to you know, to join together to start some business like um for to start the, the, the garage or the restaurant or the um, many different ideas, but then um, it didn't work out. Yeah. And until uh, one time that um, one, the idea of raising up the, the Cambodia Bird Guy Association was up and, and that was uh, mentioned together that we still love the nature yeah we we have our um we have our skill being the bird guys and stuff like that so you know why not we're trying to do um something like that as, as the way we love so um um the first idea was um gathering catching up all together and then starting to form the association for 
just the um, the service providing to um, to all the bird tours um, around Siem Reap for bird watchings and stuff like that. Yeah, but um, later and later on, the idea is getting bigger and and bigger and and it took us a lot of time and and yeah spending a lot of um, money before everything can set up like nowadays so um it was actually the very hard time for myself and for most of my colleagues to form the um to form the association and um if i talk about my own self, I would say that I um, I live without having breakfast for more than a year. You know, it's just like <clears throat> yeah, spending all the time going up and down, deal with the government for you know for the registration and for collaborations and stuff like that. So uh, it, it was definitely a hard time for me, and I had to move around from place to place um, because I don't have the money for for the, the rent, things like that. So I, I go to live with friends, I go to live with um, with my brothers-in-law and stuff like that. So it was sad and, you know, it, it, it was hard. Yep. <clears throat> so um, now we, we got everything set up and, and re everything seems to, um, to run well before the COVID time, and I, I am very happy with um, with the real with the real um, situation that happening to me right now. Because um, um, I would say that I would love to um, to be a part of the conservation. That is all I want to do. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. Any more questions? <laughs> well, it's 10 p.m. already. We should get a group photo first. Can we ask everyone to turn on their cameras? Rodek, Jobs, Sri Mom, can you ask you to take, take to turn on your camera? We'll take a group photo first. Yep, yep. Um, can you can you use me to camera? Can you use me to camera? Can you use me to take a screenshot? Sri Mom, take a camera now. Okay, uh, who's taking Maya? See, drop down, take the picture. Okay. Okay, count down. Everybody hold your smiles. We'll wait first. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we're done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for your all of your attentions and questions. And yep, hope to see you another time. Well, good luck to you. Good luck to all of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And see you guys next Friday with Chub Zhang. Yeah. All right. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to say something. Is it that we do you still have a time or is it finished? Huh? Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Hey, thank you, Maya. Thank you, everyone. Jim Chong. Hey, Chuf Sang. Yeah. Hello, yeah, Hi. good to see you all again. Because the people, people like us who come from out.